the GH5 Mark II, a review video. We should go get that car over there because the skeleton and a scary mask in it. Okay. Thank you, Lumix, for sending me the GH5 II to test out. One of the things that drives me crazy about the GH5 is that when you hit record, you have this little itty bitty red dot indicating that you are recording. Well, sometimes, you know, you might hit the record button, but it might not actually record. And you have this whole segment that you didn't actually record because you didn't notice that it was actually recording. But one of the things about the GH5 Mark II that you can do is go in here and go to settings and go to the second page of monitor display on video. And you can hit this red record frame indicator. Turn that on and then go back to the main. And then when you hit record, you have the whole frame that lights up red that indicates you are for sure recording. Is this my favorite feature of the GH5 Mark II? If you're new here, my name is Caleb and I do freelance video production with the Panasonic GH5. Now, if you're interested in learning how to make better videos with your Lumix GH5, make sure you hit that subscribe button. This is Cinema 4K, 10-bit, 422, long GOP. I have it in Vlog L. And this is at 24 frames per second, so you can see if it is locked on to me or not. The sun's kind of bright, so I'm squinting quite a bit. Is it hunting for me? Now, definitely with the new processor that the GH5 Mark II has, I did see that the autofocus, I think, in my opinion, is better than the original GH5. Now, I've seen this in a few other videos, but one of the things that I did notice is that if you have a higher frame rate, the autofocus just has more frames to work with and therefore I think is better in like 60 frames per second than it is in 24 frames per second. It just has more data, has more frames to work with. But you can see that I'm putting things up in front of the camera, you know, and then it pops back to my face and it moves pretty quick and catches pretty quick. Now I was only using the human detect autofocus portion of the autofocus and I was not using like the center point or anything like that. I was only using human detect because I didn't think the other ones were that reliable at all, but the human detect seemed to work all right. Now the body of the GH5 Mark II is pretty much the same thing as the first generation GH5. So instead of the function buttons, they have now a color profile button and a Q button to shuffle through some of your settings. Even though the buttons look different, they still operate the same. You can go in and customize by pushing down and holding down the button and setting it to whatever setting that you want. So the GH5 Mark II is fully customizable just like the first generation GH5. Other similarities to the first generation GH5 is that you have the dual card slot on this side as well as the mic, the headphone jack, HDMI, full size HDMI, and then you have the USB-C. But the USB-C on the GH5 Mark II is a charge port. So you can charge your battery and charge your GH5 Mark II through that USB-C port. Now the battery is a new style battery similar to the Lumix S5, which is gonna give you just a little bit more battery life when operating all of the powerful features, video features of the GH5 Mark II, but you can use the old style GH5 batteries on your GH5 Mark II, they work Totally fine. Now the screen on the GH5 Mark II is actually a new style screen. It's gonna be a little bit smaller than the first generation GH5, but it is gonna be sharper. It's gonna be brighter for daylight shooting. So they did make some improvements on the screen for the GH5 Mark II. And then the sensor on the GH5 Mark II has a coating on there that's gonna cut down on flares that you may get if you're pointing the camera directly into any type of light source. Now, if you're familiar shooting with the GH5, you know that the IBIS is absolutely fantastic. Well, the IBIS on the GH5 Mark II is actually improved. So you have a six and a half stop IBIS on the GH5 Mark II compared to five stops on the GH5.
Now, one of the big updates with the GH5 Mark II is going to be the live streaming capabilities, which enables you to eliminate the video capture card. So you can stream over Wi-Fi using the Lumix Sync app. You can stream directly to YouTube or Facebook using the camera audio. I think the capabilities of live streaming with the GH5 II are only going to improve as firmware updates come out. All right, let's take a quick look at some of the shoot settings on the GH5 Mark II. And here we go into the menu and record quality. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice right away is that you have a ton of different shoot settings on the GH5 Mark II, six pages worth of shoot settings. So you have some anamorphic, you know, 6K, you can go down to cinema 4K at 60 frames per second, 420 10-bit, which is a great feature on the GH5 Mark II. And then you can go all the way down to, you know, full HD at some of these different settings. Now, six pages of record quality settings is a lot to go through. But one of the cool things that the GH5 Mark II has is filtering with these record settings. So you can pick these different options right here that you might want to sort through. So I'm actually going to go to frame rate and I actually want to sort through, you know, 60 frames per second, 59.94 P. That way it'll give me just those results for the 60p so here i know that i want to record in any of the 60p options that are here i can choose real quick just two pages worth real quick i can go through and shuffle through those 60p options and choose the one that i want probably cinema 4k and i can actually go and add it to a list and then go back to this part and then i have my list record quality my list i hit that and there it is cinema 4k 60 frames per second 420 10 bit so having those different filtering options really speeds up the process and getting the shoot settings that you want Now, if you are brand new to the Lumix ecosystem and you're looking to purchase a GH5, I highly recommend that you get this new generation GH5 Mark II. You have a new processor in there. You're gonna be able to do those firmware updates, which some of them might be pretty substantial in the near future. You have some video specs that are just a little bit above the first generation GH5 and a few other things like the IBIS and the live streaming capabilities. I think that if you're brand new to the GH5, to the Lumix ecosystem, the GH5 Mark II might be the way to go. However, if you're already a GH5 shooter, I don't think there is a total need to upgrade to the GH5 Mark II. You might wanna save some dollar bills and just get the GH6 when that comes out. I don't think there's a need. If you are a current GH5 shooter, I don't think there's a need to upgrade to the GH5 Mark II, but ultimately that's up to you. The GH5 Mark II is a great camera, and if I didn't already have a GH5, I would probably go with the GH5 Mark II. Well, that's all I have for this video. It'd be awesome if you stuck around, maybe watch one of these videos that's popping up on your screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.